welcome to Comics on Comics. I'm here sitting down with Wendy Penny, who just has some great news to tell the world. Now, uh, we had you on on our last show. Yes. And tell us what has happened since that show. Well, I had to be very sneaky on the last show because I knew something that nobody else knew, and I was like, ah! because I really wanted to tell everybody, but I, I had been told by my agent not to do so. And uh, so the news was that on that, just practically that very day, we had gotten the announcement that uh, a deal had been closed for ElfQuest to become a major motion picture through Warner Brothers. <laughs> so I guess it's been it's been thirty years, mm -hmm. um, you know, working towards this goal. Yes. Tell us, you know, what was it like the first time you were approached? To, oh, uh, oh, there are so many hysterically funny stories in retrospect. At the time, they were awful. <laughs> but uh, one of the first studios to approach us back in the late seventies was Nelvana, which, in many cases, this is a fairly fine animation studio. But they had just put out their first feature animated film called Rock and Roll, which. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it went <laughs> in, the, in the theaters. Nobody got it. It was it was kind of ahead of its time. So when Rock and Roll went, <laughs> they they called us and said, "Okay, we've optioned Elf Quest, but we've decided we're going to do it live action instead." And we said, uh, "How?" Because back then there was no such thing as CGI or or as special effects of that. And they said, "Oh." Um, we're going to get kids and dress them up in muscle costumes and we're going to put them on live wolves. Ch children and wolves. And I said, for about 30 seconds, you know, because it'll be like, kid, wolf, <laughs> that'll be that, you know. So, uh, so we hastily got out of that deal. And then the next people who approached us were Rankin Bass, who did the the Hobbit and uh, uh, took a I think took a Return of the King out from under Ralph Bakshi, who did that one. And um, you know we had a little back and forth with them, but in the end, you know it was the big noses. You know Rankin Bass with the big noses. Uh, they would have redesigned the characters, and you know there was other things. We were in development as a Saturday morning cartoon show at CBS to replace, remember Dungeons and Dragons? Yes. Dungeons, very cool show, very yeah. cool show. But we lost that time slot to Pee Wee Herman. Oh, so, <laughs> so they bounced us back to like nine in the morning, which meant that we had to dumb it down and aim it at younger kids. And, and also they had a problem with Cutter and Lita. This was back in uh, the mid '80s, and and their problem was that it couldn't be a mixed marriage. Uh, either Cutter had to be dark, or Lita had to be light, but it had, you know, they had to be one color. And and oh, and then the bigger problem was the two kids because they said you can't have a, a brave, bold, tomboyish little girl and a, a, de a delicate, mystical little boy. You have to switch their personalities. So by that point, we had also lost that time slot, and they bumped us up to 8.30 in the morning, and then they wanted elf Muppet babies. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so as you can see, I mean, you know, we, we always got excited about these possibilities, and we always told the fans, you know, this is a possibility. We never said this is really going to happen, but the fans would get all excited, and, the, and then we would have to explain to them what was going on, and the fans would be like, oh, you know, so there was another wait. And um, then Ed Pressman optioned ElfQuest in 94, and of course Ed Pressman is the producer who brought Conan the Barbarian to the world. Uh, he had put high fantasy on the screen, and his little boy Sammy, his little five-year-old boy Sammy, was a big ElfQuest fan, so he wanted to do the movie. And uh, dealing with Ed was great. He was very straightforward with us. But he wanted to make a movie that Sammy could watch. So it had to be G-rated, and we had to tone down. You know, So I wrote, I wrote the screenplay and did the storyboard for that. And the aim was to get it to, done in 2D, because uh, CGI hadn't really advanced in 94, anywhere near the point it is now. 
And, um, you know, we, we shopped it around to various studios that were very interested, but none of them felt they could do it because it, it's, they looked at Elfquest as being as complicated as Lord of the Rings. And, you know, it, it and at was, that time, at the t yeah. who, you know, who, I mean, Ralph Bakshi tried, but, right. yeah. So, um, after Ed, we were, we were optioned a couple more times, you know, and, and the fans got their hopes up again. You know, we were real sorry about that. But when you're trying to do a deal where uh, it's independent, where you retain a lot of control and, and you are uh, essentially co-producing, deals like that can fall apart for a lot of different reasons. And, and so uh, we would, like, get right up to the altar but never quite marry. Mm -hmm. And the one thing we never had through this whole thing was a director attached. And one thing I have learned in my 14 years in Hollywood, and, and ElfQuest is not the only property by any means to be 14 years in development hell. Our, right. our, our story is very similar to a lot of stories, so I, I don't by any means have any regrets. We've, we've just been patient, and eventually it, it turned our way. But the one thing we really needed was a director who was absolutely in love with the property, who could who could get a studio to fall in love with it and see it through, and this is what came down from heaven in the form of Ross and Thurber just a couple of months ago. Ross and Thurber is a very handsome young director, best known for Dodgeball of all things, <laughs> and which is hysterically funny, by the way. Um, and uh, he, his agent contacted us only just a couple of months ago and said, look, Rawson grew up reading ElfQuest. He's been dying to do them. And, and we're like, dodgeball? Who knew? <laughs> you know, who would have made that connection? But anyway, he came to us. And we said, hey, go for it. So, uh, you know, Rawson made the rounds and made the pitches. And, and Warner Brothers got it. Wow. So that's so the story. That's... Uh that's amazing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, you definitely need someone. You know, the, the way Hollywood works, you need someone to help shepherd. You know, your oh. project through because if not, mm -hmm. you know, it's like many false starts and things like that. And, that is that is our story. I mean, uh, we were always advised by so many different people retain control. You know, it's awful when you lose creative control. They're going to ruin your property, and and we kind of bought into that, and and we always tried to have as many fingers in the pie as we possibly could. And in a way, that got in the way of the movie getting made. Uh, you know, even the fans were like, it's got to be perfect. It's got to be exactly the way you drew it, you know. And, and we were under all this pressure from all sorts of different people saying, keep control, keep control. The minute we let go of control and said, universe, take it and do as thou wilt, that's when it happened. You know, you have to let go in order to you, get. You stopped fighting the process. We stopped and fighting like, it. Okay. And now we've got a director who absolutely wants us as involved as we want to be and is as reasonable for us to be. He totally, he, he says his number one goal is to trust the source and be faithful to the source. He's not going to mess it up. He grew up reading this. He wants to see this movie too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's like a dream come true. Well, especially in, in, in Hollywood, when, when the comic book creator is more involved in the work, the work has always been better mm -hmm. than when you completely ignore, you know, the creative people. Um, and that's awesome that now, you know, we're going to get an elf quest that, that, you know, will have your input, they'll have your fingerprints all over it, and, you know, we're not going to get these weird matchups and things like that, because and demographics says that this should happen here, there you are. that relationship shouldn't work, and, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. And more than that, Hollywood, actually, I think it's a great thing that there was a 14-year delay, because in, in retrospect, uh, Hollywood wasn't ready, uh, technically, to solve all our visual problems. I mean, putting live children on live wolves, right? <laughs> right, uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so it took 14 years for Hollywood to get to arrive at Gollum. Mm. I mean, you know, Gollum is now the gold standard of animating a character that you totally believe. And, it, and it's getting even better than that. Now, do you so, think um, uh, Lord of the Rings and, um, you know, basically, you know, fairies and, and that kind of world is, is, is more and more in the public eye? Hellboy 2? was all about, you know, uh, fairies and, and, and uh, elves and things like that. Lord of the Rings, of course, um, you know. Traditionally, whenever the economy has been shaky, there's always been a higher demand for fantasy. And that's why you're seeing more and more fantasy films coming out right now. 
Um, and, and of course, Warner Brothers is Lord of the Rings, Warner Brothers is Harry Potter, and so hopefully ElfQuest is the next in line there to satisfy the, the desire the public has to escape from a lot of worries and a lot of problems and fears and just, just be wafted away into another world. Thank you.